this uh, lack on our part uh, to comprehend uh, the issue in some more comprehensive way. And when I say more comprehensive way, I mean combining theology with philosophy, with the philosophy of nature, as well as Sufism. Here I have to just uh, making reference to three or four points. In relation to the multiversal universe or the concept of multiversal universe that you find in Muslim theology. This uh, terminology might be mine at this spot but the input has been deliberately has been uh, uh, very brilliantly deliberated upon by Professor Ovedullah Faisal from a theological point of view, juristic point of view. So the point that is given is the multiversal universe. We live in a multiversal universe. So it is as it has been put. Umamun Amsalakum. Each and everything that is in this universe is Umamun Amsalakum. So here, our, acti our attitude towards the other, whether this other is other than humans or any facet of existence, it is Umamun Amsalakum. So here, Hajar, Shajar, Nabat, each and everything is Ummah. To have this holistic approach of Ummah. What is Ummah? When we usually say Ummah, we simply mean Muslim Ummah. The notion is very clear. But here in this perspective, the Quranic injection is Ummahun Amthalukum. So here each and every facet of, or every phenomenon of nature or creation is Ummah. And we have to be responsible towards the Ummah that is other than us. And this other than us, maybe material, maybe non-material, maybe solid, maybe liquid, maybe in terms of meanings, ideas. Because when we address this aspect from holistic point of view, what comes to my mind primarily is the idea of sustainability or sustainable development in Islam or perspectives of sustainable development in order to continue the existence of uh, humans or creatures in this universe there has to be continuity and there has to be sustainability <coughs> if we consume each and everything and there is a finish fully stop there cannot be any further episodes of humanity so here the development of nature has been combined with the development of human ideas, thought, and the social responsibility. The social responsibility. <coughs> the Arab discourse of nature have been represented by a plethora of texts, theological, juristic, philosophical. <coughs> In philosophical traditions, we do have the very basic concept of al anasr al arba the four elements. And again, just recollect this idea of four elements within the parameters of Umarun and Tharabun. So here the basic discourse is that of Ummah, which is inclusive, it is not exclusive. It has been elaborated upon by Ibn Sina, who dedicated a significant part of his Ashifa to approaching the natural elements domain of philosophy, where his definition of natural elements is not purely scientific or scientism, it is not a scientism, rather it is holistic. And in a chart that is very significant, I will just summarize it in a few words. What we find is that uh, in writings of uh, Ibn Sina, how the four elements in Islam, in Islamic theology, that is uh, in Islamic philosophy, 
العناصر الأربعة. How they are related to other facets of human being like childhood, youth, age old stage, prosperity. Besides, their relation to the ideas of good and bad. That is all. The ideas of ethics, ethical philosophy. And the season. So here, the spring is related to childhood and east and air and blood and sanguine. So here, even the season, we find that he combines spring to childhood, east, air and blood. He combines summer with youth, south, fire and yellow bile. He combines autumn with maturity, west, earth and black bile. As he combines winter with old age, north, water, etc. So the point that is uh, that uh, draws our attention, especially is uh, the holistic approach we have in the philosoph in the philosophical discourse uh, of uh, nature, as we find uh, in writings of uh, Ignatius. Like he combines earth with spreading skeleton, faces, touch, form, topic, obstinacy. He combines water with dropping muscles and other nutrition, etc. Air to, to and fro, circulation, saliva, and fire with rising, liver, sweat, tears, and smell. So here, what is known as al al Azwar and al al Akbar. It is projected within the ambit of the holistic approach that just illustrates the al al Akbar with the al al Asghar and here al al Asghar is the outer universe and al al Akbar is the internal universe which for the ordinary man might seem to be contradictory or quite the opposite. In multiversal cosmological uh, uh, domain, we have uh, philosophical approaches <coughs> by Fakhruddin al Razi, where his conception of physics and the physical world in his uh, book, that is Al Mutalib al Aliyah, he criticizes the idea of Earth's centrality within the universe and, ex and explores the notion of the existence of a multiverse in the context of the commentary of, of the Holy Quran. All praise belongs to God, Lord of the worlds. So we have a, a discourse, a very brilliant discourse by Imam Razi. In Sufi perspective, and with this, I will just come to the conclusion. <laughs> that actually gives us uh, more comprehensive perspectives <laughs> or approach to address these vexed issues, which have uh, metamorphosed nowadays into a full blown anthropocene. Here, the interpretation of uh, something that is uh, not within the parameters of theology, usually, like the nature of the letters, components of language. How the components of language, say alif ba da da a b c d ka ka ga ga, and so on and so forth, how they are related to the domain of the ideas and the realities, both within human nature and outside the human nature, that is the universe. So how a harmonizing paradigm is projected while studying the relation between the sound, sound segments in language, and how, and what are the things they represent in the domain of ideas and values. So here, the latest further, I'm just giving you two or three examples. The letters like <coughs> Alif, Wa, Mi, Fa, Sheen, and Zod represent five. So here the idea is that you have some alphabets and they are projected 
in relation to their role or correspondence to the phenomenon of nature besides the domain of ideas and values ji za kaf sin qaf ta and zo represent air da ha la ra kha ga represent water and ba waw a nu sa ta da represent the earth so this is again i am taking as a very uh, brilliant example of the of projecting universe in the multiversal perspective we as a students of arabic language and literature must remember some of uh, scholars especially i will be mentioning here hayy ibn yaqdan of ibn tuhay this philosophical novel which has played very significant role in the very course of renaissance in uh, europe because uh, to him is attributed the idea of uh, <coughs> of uh, al fitra fi tabi'at al insan that is uh, the slate the blank slate of nature and the idea here was that if human nature is pure if the human is pure human nature is pure his perception is pure then this purity would be leading him to what could be said or projected in eastern perspectives as nature or moksha from indian perspectives so this uh, a moksha aspect has been elaborated upon by muslim sufis also although here the concept is that of najah and how this has been approached to in some basic concepts of uh, sufism in terms of rituals especially in silsilas like uh, naqshbandiya shaqtariya silsila how they represent lataif the concept of lataif allah taif of khamsa qalb sir khafi afa etc with the domains of reality <coughs> in conversation with uh, the uh, philosophy of yoga especially uh, raj yoga so i will just leave it this here the point is that uh, and i will and just concluding uh, my submission with this we have the multiversal concept of cosmology human and nature in islam both in terms of theology as well as in terms of philosophy at six and literature besides uh, some uh, fundamental books which have been written addressing the concept of of anthropocene or this equilibrium or imbalance lack of equilibrium or imbalance that we have in modern times and this imbalance has led to the phenomena of and to proceed with this i conclude i thank the organizers for inviting me